Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Denise Serrano. I'm a physician assistant at Juva Skin and Laser Center. And today I wanted to have a discussion on neurotoxins and dermal fillers for millennials. I love this title because it is true. Nobody ever wants to get wrinkles and we want to stay young and rejuvenated forever. Okay, so these are my disclosures. I have no affiliation with any dermal filler or neurotoxin companies, and all the content in this presentation comes from my own personal experiences and knowledge. Okay, so we're going to quick, quickly brush on the difference between Botox and fillers, um, which is right for me. So that's pretty much what the whole lecture is going to be about. But quickly, let's just review some of the similarities and differences between Botox and fillers. So Botox relaxes the muscles <clears throat> that causes wrinkling, while facial fillers enhance facial volume and shape. Botox removes fine lines and wrinkles. It helps with a condition called hyperhidrosis, which is another term for excessive sweating. While facial fillers remove laugh lines, they enhance the lip, they contour the face. Botox lasts on average three months, while facial fillers can last a few months to a few years. Okay, in more detail, what is Botox, quote unquote? So this diagram that we see on the left is a simplified version of what exactly Botox is. Now, the actual name for Botox is neurotoxin. What we see here in the yellow is a nerve and on the purple is the muscle. And the neurotoxin is that fork looking uh, shape that we see on the right of the diagram. And what it's doing, it's actually breaking these small blue circles which are projected into the muscle. And that's, that whole mechanism is what causes your muscles to contract. If the Botox or the neurotoxin is inhibiting that action, then the muscle will be kept in a relaxed state. And now, what does that mean for wrinkles? If the protein is cut, the muscle is not contracting. If there's no contraction of the muscle, then there is no wrinkle formation, right? And that's what we care about. Okay. Now that we're talking about wrinkles, let's discuss what the two main types of wrinkles are. So we have static and we have dynamic wrinkles. Static wrinkles are creases in the skin that are seen at rest without any movement, while dynamic wrinkles are wrinkles that are seen with facial expression and movement. These are wrinkles that are present and have been seen since we were children. So we wanna prevent the wrinkles from turning into static wrinkles because static wrinkles can be improved with neurotoxin, but they're difficult to be completely erased. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we try to start neurotoxin at an earlier age because we wanna prevent the formation of these static wrinkles. Okay, so what are the different types of quote-unquote Botox that we have? So we have four main types that are FDA approved in the U.S. These four types are Botox, Dysport, Xeomin, and Juveau. That is the newest neurotoxin that has recently come out on the market. Okay, so what you care about is what is the difference between all four and why should I choose one over the other? And I'm gonna dive into that now. So Botox is the conventional uh, brand that a lot of people know about. It's the original, it is also the most studied neurotoxin, meaning there has been a lot of published medical literature to prove its efficacy. The second one is Dysport. It is second in line as the most studied. Dysport is well known to have more spread. Um, it also has the most amount of toxin per nanogram. So what that means is that there's a higher dosage per um, volume that we're injecting. And it's also been known to kick in quickly. The third one is Xeomin. Xeomin is known as the most pure. What does that mean? When we have a uh, 
neurotoxin in a bottle, there's a lot of um, preservatives and extra proteins added to make that um, to make the neurotoxin work essentially. But Zeoman has a least amount of quote unquote extra fluff seen. And why this is important is because if you have somebody that has been getting neurotoxins since they were 21 years old and now they're 40 and they feel like the neurotoxin is just not working as well, so their body has become resistant to it, they may have to switch up the brand that they, they're using in order for it to start working again. Zeoman has been known to not develop that sort of resistance. Zeoman is also highly comparable to Botox. And now the most recent one is uh, the Juveau brand. It is, again, the newest one on the market, highly comparable to Botox, and some say that it does kick in quickly, um, but we don't have a whole ton of information on Juveau just yet. Okay, so when should I get Botox? Again, we have to think of it as a preventative measure. We want to prevent the static wrinkle formation. If there's less muscle activity, then there's never uh, any wrinkle formation. You might want to consider getting uh, neurotoxin at an earlier age if you've had excessive sun exposure at a young age or you have sun damage. Um, and over time, if you've been doing neurotoxin for 10 years and you compare yourself how you looked when you were, um, you know, let's say 30 years old to when you're 40, you will see that there's really no difference in wrinkle formation because you've kept up with getting this neurotoxin. It's kind of like doing a skincare routine. You have to think of it that way. How long does it last? That's a great question, right? So it depends. Uh, on average, it's known to last three to four months. Sometimes I've had patients even say it's lasted them six months, but really it depends on the strength of the muscle, the muscle activity, and the dosage that is being used. Now, this is a great segue for us to talk about baby Botox, this new term that's been thrown around on social media, and is it worth it? So what this means is Conventionally, we inject 20 units of uh, neurotoxin into the frown line area, and it will last, like I said, three to four months. However, if there's someone who is really nervous about getting neurotoxin, they're really concerned that they're gonna look frozen, they might request baby Botox, or if it's someone who's really young. Now, that's great because it will give you more expression, and you may get that quote unquote more natural look, but the issue is that it may not last you the full three to four months. It might only last you two months. So really it is a personal preference and something for you to determine ultimately. Okay, so what to expect during and after the procedure. So um, there's really minimal pain while you're getting Botox. On average, it's 3 out of 10 pain on a 10-point scale. What it looks like is uh, small blebs, almost like mosquito bites. Um, we instruct, I instruct patients not to lie down or exercise or lean forward for at least 3 hours after the procedure. And normally it takes from 7 to 14 days to take on its full effect, but on average you'll see its full effect on 10 days, after 10 days. Um, but it might kick in as soon as 3 days, like with Dysport, for example. Uh, Botox is definitely an art. I know that it might seem easy to do based on maybe some videos that you've watched on social media or advertising, but really it's an art. It requires someone who understands facial anatomy, anatomy extensively, an injector who picks up on small details. It should only be done by a medical provider with a deep understanding of the product. And prices vary vastly depending on the dosage. Remember, more dosage equals longer lasting and the amount of expertise that a provider has. So other ways that we can use neurotoxin 
other than for wrinkles are what I've listed here and we'll go over them. So we can use it for oily skin complexion to reduce the pore size. We can use it for a lip flip. Now this is a good um, time for me to talk about the difference between a lip flip and a lip filler procedure. So a lip flip is when we inject Botox onto the pink border of the lip and that causes a subtle um, change in the lip where it kind of perks up. So it flips up, hence the name lip flip. Whereas lip filler, you're, add, you're adding volume to the lip, so it will look enhanced. A lip flip is, is good for someone who is nervous about getting lip filler, or maybe they already have larger looking lips and they just want a very subtle change where it just like flipped a little bit upwards. So it would be good for them, but just keep in mind that a lip flip, because it's neurotoxin, it'll only last about three months, whereas lip filler can last you nine to 12 months. We can also use it for a nasal tip lift. So if you have a downturned nose, we can inject Botox into the nasal tip to give it a little bit more of a perky appearance. We can also use it in the masseter muscle, which is also known as jaw slimming. Um, to give you a more feminized facial shape. We can also use it um, for wide range noses and make it look more narrow. This is very popular with the Asian uh, population. And we can use it for gummy smile. We can use it for turning your frown upside down. So those individuals that naturally have a, a um, mouth curvature that is downwards and a lot of them complain that they look unhappy, we can inject Botox quickly and uh, the mouth will become more upturned for a more pleasing appearance. We can use it for chin dimpling. Um, we can use it, one of my favorite ways is for an eyebrow lift. And then lastly, sort of a more popular way of using Botox that has come about recently is micro Botox. That's used for fine lines under the eyes or uh, along the neck bands. Um, so that's pretty much it. Okay, so this is a before and after of me. This is um, an example of neurotoxin that was injected for my gummy smile done by one of my colleagues. And it was a quick two minute procedure where we injected neurotoxin into uh, the L-SAN muscle. Um, and we can see what a drastic difference a two minute procedure can make. In the before picture, there's about four millimeters of gum tissue showing and it made me feel a little insecure about myself and I wanted it to look more uh, appealing, make my teeth look larger. And you can even see it actually changed uh, my upper lip, uh, the way it looked when I smiled. So it almost looks like I got lip filler. Okay, and now we see uh, an eyebrow asymmetry correction. This is uh, one of my patients that I saw several months ago. Um, and I love this picture because it really depicts what I was explaining before about how important it is to choose an injector that pays attention to fine detail. So we can see that on our left, the patient has a higher eyebrow lift. So his frontalis muscle, which is the muscle that co covers the forehead, is uh, more active on our right side and on his left side is a little bit weaker. So that means that he requires more neurotoxin on that side. If we inject Botox in a cookie cutter fashion, we're not gonna get optimal results. We're not gonna get natural looking results. So um, I love the after, it shows that he's more evened out, he's more symmetric. And also in the after, you can see that we were still able to maintain his facial expression. Okay, this is another before and after that I, I love because it hits on some of the points that I brought up earlier. Um, this is a patient that is seen at rest, okay? So she's not having any sort of facial expression. Um, when she came to me, she was concerned about not only her wrinkles on her forehead, uh, but she was also concerned about oily skin complexion and pore size, acne. Um, and we were able to actually correct all of those things just by doing a neurotoxin procedure on the forehead. Um, this procedure is seen um, 
about two weeks apart. And we can see that although I talked a lot about us not being able to correct static wrinkles 100%, there is a large improvement of her static wrinkles and decreased oily complexion, less acne, pore size reduction is also seen. Okay, this is not one of my patients. This is a celebrity um, that was on social media and we can see that she had very large masculine appearing masseter musculature and she had neurotoxin injected for a more slim feminized appearance and the amount required is about half a bottle of neurotoxin. So just keep that in mind if this is something, this is a procedure that you're thinking about jumping into okay now we're going to talk about dermal fillers so i love this picture because it really on the left side cat lady is someone that you know we some people think about when they think dermal fillers they think that your face is going to look puffy overfilled unnatural um and that is just not the case that is not what our goal is for patients. The photo on the right, however, if we look at Jennifer Lopez in from 1993 to 2008, what is the difference between the two? I mean, this is 25 years apart. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, well, there's really no huge difference. Maybe you can say she looks sexier. <laughs> um, and I would agree with that. But the whole point of this is uh, dermal fillers are used to maintain youth, keep you looking young, revolumize whatever has been lost, and keep you looking yourself. We want to look natural. And um, that's why I love this picture because it really shows how there's no difference between JLo at 30 years old and JLo at 50. That's the goal. So, what are dermal fillers? Dermal fillers are used to restore the volume of the face, contour the face for more appealing uh, facial features. The results are very technique dependent. As we can see with the cat lady, um, obviously that was not great technique that was used. Um, dermal fillers vary by substance and there are two main types of dermal fillers. There are hyaluronic acid fillers and there are biostimulatory fillers. The most common fillers that we hear about are the hyaluronic acid fillers, and they vary with support, uh, flexibility, and length of action. The uses of fillers are to restore loss of collagen, fa uh, to restore facial fat pads that have descended, as we can see on that picture on the bottom, and to uh, help restore any bony resorption or displacement, and to help with that loss of skin fullness and the hyaluronic acid that we had originally had in our skin when we were younger that starts to fade as we age. I included these two pictures that we see on the slide. I like the one above because it really shows how there is a significant resorption in the maxilla and the maxilla, which is the upper jaw, is displaced forward. Additionally, around the eyeball area, where the eyeball sits, we see that the bone is actually widened. So that makes that's what gives us that more tired appearance. In the bottom picture, we see an inverted triangle on this young woman on the left side. And that is what we want. We want to maintain that facial shape. But unfortunately, as we age, the triangle becomes upright with the facial fat pads that start to sag downwards. So the goal is to restore that inverted triangle with dermal fillers. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about what types of dermal fillers we have. Uh, we have Juvederm with the Allergan Company. We have Radius with Mertz. We have Restylane products with a company called Galderma. Um, and I'm not going to read out every single derma filler that is available. You can see that there. It's just to show you what all the tools we have on our toolbox. When you come to an appointment and you ask us, you know, I want my cheeks enhanced. Well, these are all the different options that we have. And then it's our job to talk to you about what's right for you. 
And just a little side note, I wanted to mention that there is a dermal filler coming real soon, specifically for the lips, and I'm so excited about it. And I'm finally allowed to talk about it because it has finally been FDA approved and it is um, shown in some magazines, but I won't share the name just yet. Stay tuned. Okay. The other big question, how long does it last? Really, it depends on the kind of filler. Um, it depends on the brand, the flexibility, the support. In general, 9 to 12 months for softer gels and 12 to 24 months for thicker gels. So soft gels are used for lips. Thicker gels are used more for um, the cheeks, the jawline, restructuring bone. And then we have the biostimulatory fillers that can last up to two years. But the cool thing about those is that they can continue to stimulate collagen production for up to five years. So I love these fillers for women who are of older age. Um, and I love this picture on the left because it, it kind of depicts um, how much filler is in a single syringe so you can see that these are all teaspoons and there's about a quarter of the teaspoon is one syringe in the middle spoon that you see there this concept is super important because just like i talked about with neurotoxin if you're somebody who is 35 years old you've never had a filler done before and you're coming to me because you want a full facial rejuvenation that might require several syringes maybe four or five you know it depends um, but if you continue to come to me every year or so you're not going to require that same amount it'll be more uh, it'll be more for maintenance so the more amount of product you put in initially the less products you'll have to use in order to maintain those results. Okay, how do we prepare for a filler appointment? So what we're going to do is we're going to avoid oily vitamins, supplements such as fish oil, CoQ10, vitamin E. We're going to stop all blood thinners such as aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen. If you're on more potent blood thinners, be sure to speak to your cardiologist or PCP regarding those um, and you need to avoid exercise the day of. So what to expect during and after a filler procedure? On average, the pain is about a five, four to five out of 10. We also use a, topic, a topical numbing cream um, to ensure that you have the minimal amount of pain as possible. Different techniques are used, a needle versus a cannula. So what is a cannula? A cannula resembles a needle, except it has a blunt tip. So there's nothing, there's no sharp uh, tip to it. What this does for us injectors is it ensures less pain, it's safer. And for some of us, it might be easier to um, inject the product that way. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, after the procedure, we're going to ask you to ice for a short period of time. We don't want to ice for too long because that might actually induce swelling. You, you can expect to see some swelling and bruising for up to two weeks, and usually it peaks at two to three days and then slowly improves. After the procedure, for about two days, I ask patients to avoid alcohol, exercise, sleep with the head of the bed elevated to reduce the chances of swelling. You can even use a topical bruise cream, for example, Arnica. Uh, Arnica gel or cream has not exactly been proven to be 100% efficacious, so just keep that in mind. Um, and we can even do in-office treatments like a PDL laser. Um, so if you're somebody that has a special event going on in the weekend, but you really, really want to get lip filler done, uh, but you're really concerned about the bruising, you can get your procedure and then pop in the next day and have the PDL laser and then like magic, we can get rid of the bruising. And not all uh, offices offer this service, so just keep that in mind. Okay, prevention. So... Again, as we age, we see a, dis a redistribution of the facial planes as early as your 20s. We see a descent of the cheeks. We see hollowing of the tear troughs or the under eye area. We see dehydration and loss of lip volume. We see sagging of your jawline. But not just for the redistribution of facial fat pads. We also can contour the face. We can give cheeks that highlight look that um is more appealing 
too many. Uh, we can enhance your chin, make it look longer for a more heart-shaped, feminized look. We can plump the lips and then usually tear troughs or under eye area filler is used for giving a more well-rested look and to avoid the use of under eye concealer. Again, fillers are not meant to overfill your face. They're actually meant for restoring youth, harmonizing the face, subtle facial contouring. Natural is key, less is more. That's my motto. Okay, I really wanted to show you this before and after of this young woman. She is in her early 30s, and I really love it because it almost looks like nothing was done. I mean, it does look like something was done. Of course, that's what we want, but she looks natural. She looks herself. She doesn't look overfilled. And believe it or not, four and a half syringes total were used to achieve these results. In the next, in this slide, I'm going to show you where I, I placed the product. Um, so I, I added a little product to her lips. I added some product to her nasal labial folds. I added some product to her tear troughs, which we talked about earlier. And we added product in her cheeks. Okay, this is another, this is not a filler before and after, but I did want to show um, a, a very important concept, how youthful and rejuvenated Adele looks in the picture on the left. Um, and we can see that now, that I think that was like maybe three, four years ago. Now we see Adele after losing a significant amount of weight. We see her face. She starts to, uh, she's sagging a little bit. We see these creases under the eyes are more indented. She looks older. So what do we do? Well, this is what, what we do. We will... Um, enhance her face and make it look, we'll restore it, making it look like it did on her before she lost all that weight by revolumizing it. Um, it's really important to understand that facial fat, to a certain degree, makes you look uh, more youthful. Um, and you can see she had filler, probably some filler added there, and in the nasal labial fold, which is where that arrow that I just popped up, that just popped up it is and on her, uh, the side of her cheeks, and maybe she even got a little neurotoxin on her crow's feet there. Okay, so now that I've chatted with you all about, all about neurotoxin and filler, uh, I want you guys to take a guess on what this patient had done. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Okay. And so the correct answer is C, neurotoxin and filler. I think it's uh, quite impressive to see how much younger we can make a, pa a patient look um, after these procedures without invasive surgery. Um, but it's important to note, once again, in order to achieve these drastic results, she had six syringes total. So just good to keep that in mind. Okay, now we've talked a lot about neurotoxin and filler, but I still, as being the dermatology PA that I am, I still think skincare is number one. Skin integrity is key. So my three holy grails are vitamin C topical, vitamin A topical, and my number one sunscreen. The photo on the left shows uh, the products that I have sitting in my vanity. And not, they're not all there, but I really love my Juva products um, for moisturization that you see there. And then my Altrino, which is a prescription retinoid that I use daily. Um, in general, my motto is to use a combination approach for maintaining the best version of yourself and staying youthful. A combination of lasers, injectables, and skin rituals. Why do I call them rituals? Is because I think it's important to stay consistent in order to see a difference. Finally, I just want to quickly touch on, uh, we have a Juva self-care package going on where you purchase three products out of the four and you get 15% off your entire order. And then we customize them to your skin type. So we have an acne prone skin package um, and we have an anti-aging regimen. One of my favorite products that we have in the office are the Glycel pads that are used before, I like to use these pads before I exercise in order to prevent chest and back acne. 
And then from the anti-aging package, my favorites are the Neocutis Micro Eye and the Skin Better Overnight Cream. I use the I use these products religiously. And then uh, we have a hair loss treatment package. So even if you're somebody that is already on a hair loss regimen, you're already taking pills, whatever it may be, like I mentioned earlier, combination treatment is best. So you might want to supplement that with the Viviscal supplements, the shampoo, conditioner. And then finally, we have the skincare pack, the sensitive package uh, for dry skin and sensitive skin. And my favorite product from that um, skin type is the Vita Pure Cleansing Milk.